giant freaking robots. Spiky bits. That's right, y'all. This is happening. What is going on? I'm Robbie B. And this, of course, is our breakdown of the giant freaking robots for Imperial Knights. You got the Valiant, the Castilian, and the Armager Helfers. <laughs> oh my gosh. So these two kits obviously are $170 each. You can't make each one out of each one, unfortunately. But just, just look it up on the internet. They'll tell you all about it. They have many things to say. <laughs> the Armager Helverns are a two-pack for $75 this week. And we know next week coming out will be the close combat multi-melta versions as well, both for $75. So today we're going to break down and build all of these box sets, starting with the Armager Helverns. Now, it's going to be the same exact thing that, con that came with the close combat version that came in the Forge Bane box. You're going to get two sprues, however, in here of legs and two sets of torsos, which isn't anything new. What is new, however, are the auto cannons right here. And of course, you get the uh, little decal sheet and the large 100, 100 millimeter bases. So this is all that's new in this box right here. Now I've got some ideas. We've already done a video on how to magnetize these right here. I got my uh, close combat one right here with some uh, 3D upgrade parts. And you can check out the video that's currently up on YouTube here, how to magnetize your armature. The same exact thing will work for these. This is the same size magnet hole right there. So you don't have to worry about any of that. So it goes together. Easy game, easy life. These things are rather large. When you start putting this on here, you're gonna see a, a much larger profile, very, very large and in charge-ish which is gonna look really sweet. So we're not gonna reinvent the wheel and put all these together and show you how to magnetize it because we've already done it. <laughs> so there's that, I suppose. Um, check out that video. We'll link it below in the description so you can find out more. But I mean, these guns look great. I really, really think they're highly well detailed and stuff. You know, you've got the extra drums here the drilled out barrels, because remember this is a, a whole assembly here. You put this half over here and this half goes here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And you got the little shield that locks in around there. I guess you put it down underneath there before, yeah, before you glue it on. So that's the Armager Helvern. Next up is the Knight Castellan, which you can see here. It's too big for the zoom in, but that's okay. Here's a better look at it. So this is gonna come with your plasma gatter and the Volcano Lance and a various assortment of Siege Breaker and seal, Shield... <laughs> Siege Breaker and Shield Breaker missiles. Say that 10 times fast. GW is notorious <laughs> for making things sound similar in releases and we get all sorts of tongue twisted uh, from time to time. Now, once you open this bad boy up, this is a $170 behemoth. Got your pull-out tray. You're going to notice that it's three large sprues right there and a full color manual. We'll break that down in a second. Now, as far as the sprues themselves go, oh, and a really nice decal sheet. So if you've been wanting something a little bit better for your knights, well, this one definitely will help. It's got all of the main five Questorus. Uh, Imperial houses here, but none of the Mechanicum ones. Uh, I kind of forget where you get the Mechanicum ones from. Well, no Raven's Mechanicum. Hmm, it's just five select ones. Very interesting. There is nine, but we only get five. Hmm. All right, well, moving on. Uh, it is the standard knight size base right there, so you don't have to worry about any of those upgrades or anything that you might have, or any of the resin makers out there. Probably don't have to change any of their. Uh, sizing or anything like that. Now this kit is going to contain, what is it? Sprue C? D? E-I-E-I-O? I forget which one exactly they are numbered because it'll help with the, oh, it's Sprue A. So you're going to get Sprue A and Sprue C. Two instances of Sprue C. Excuse me, nope, take that all back. Two instances of Sprue A. Sprue A is your leg sprue and the shoulder pads your hips and stuff like that. This is gonna be the same for both. And then the thing that makes this one different, this one, the Castellan, is 
your uh, sprue C right here, which is gonna be your different carapace and your different weapon options, head, etc., etc., etc. But both have similar design elements in here that fit into both sprues. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, there are subtle differences between the two knights, but like I said, if we just magnetize the weapons, we kind of future-proof ourselves and pick up some upgrades. Or if you just magnetize them anyways, and then that way you can pick up some upgrades if the opportunity presents itself, then it's easy game, easy life. So we're gonna also show you how to do that as we unbox and build this behemoth. I'm not gonna get into looking at individual components quite yet because it is a thorough project uh, that I'd rather showcase to you as we get it put together and show you any potential gotchas. I already noticed a few things about the legs that I wanna try out to maybe multi-position them, which may or may not pan out. Uh, notice how to magnetize the weapons already. It's a, it's a very thorough uh, little book here that I think is pretty cool and being full color definitely helps out and then it's got all your data sheets and everything in it but again if you want to spend the 15 bucks and pick up the uh, data sheet cards that's probably more of a, a better way to go so we're going to put this one together separately and then show you kind of uh, both together with the valiant how they go together kind of combo them up but let's unbox the valiant next now this night's milkshake are probably going to bring all the hobbyists to the yards because Man, let me tell you what, people are super excited about this harpoon, the largest damage weapon that I can recall that isn't on something from Forge World. Man, this thing is a beast. And of course, the Conflagration Flamer doesn't do anyone any favors on the enemy side of things. Point directly at enemy. That's what that says right there. All three barrels. <laughs> there it is in all of its majesty on the back. Of course, House Raven, which may be the best choice and probably the most contrastable choice with red. Red is always amazing colored paint uh, out there. So I can't wait to be able to find some time to paint one of these bad boys, that's for sure. But we're gonna at least get it put together today for you, which I am also super excited about because at my heart, I am more of a builder. There's the instruction manual. Nothing's gonna be any different than what we just showed you with the Castellan, fortunately, unfortunately. Now, what is different from the Castellan is this bad boy right here. So again, you're gonna get two of the leg sprues, which are exactly the same. And this gives you the cool options like the shield breaker missiles and the siege breaker guns. So you can mix and match those depending on which version and which loadout you're kind of taking points wise, right? So we're just gonna put those away. And then you've got your differential sprue here. This is sprue B, which makes the Valiant a Valiant. You can see similar designs right here that we saw on the Castellan that are gonna stick to this. And then of course, this whole carapace that piece is a little different right here. So, you know, there is some similarities and there is some differences and we'll obviously break those down as we get them put together and show you also how to magnetize these beasts. And if we can get the legs to be um, a different pose, hopefully. Okay. So we dug in, we're on, well, the first and second page here. And I noticed something, I thought the legs would be posable, which uh, they're not, but they are. You can do a little bit of work here and make them, like it's meant to lock in a certain way and they're kind of cantored in towards the hips. So the knight's hips don't lie, obviously. But what you could do is you could notch these little tabs off and turn it so that they go the other way, right? And then you can just glue these pistons on because these are half pistons to basically become the correct direction. Uh, it would be easy to do, but it's gonna take a little bit more time than what I wanna throw at this video. So we're just gonna assemble it the intended way. But I just want you guys to know that if you follow the instructions on page one, but just switch the way you put the pistons on and stuff, in theory, it should work if you don't use the notches and you just use some pretty good glue and glue it in and make sure it's all tight. And then obviously make sure that you ratchet it down uh, the correct way into the sockets of the ankle. So it is doable with a little bit more work. If you are getting both knights and you want them to look separate, then this is a very mid-level kind of conversion type deal. 
Just a real quick gotcha right here as well. When you're assembling this, the instructions aren't 100% clear, but you want these little notches in the ankle pistons or receptacles, the sockets, socket plate, ankle piston socket plate. You want these notches to be pointed forward because these sockets are the appropriate depth for these big pistons, whereas the side pistons are a little bit more shallow to give you that correct height with the two shorter ones on the inside and the two longer ones on the outside. Uh, now, I don't think that would change if you wanted to flip the legs around. Uh, I, I most definitely think you could just put this leg over here and this leg over here and vice versa. And just these little caps would just go on the inside instead of the outside. And then you would literally use the same socket plates. But again, you'd have to drill it out and do a bunch of stuff. It's not undoable and it's mildly easy, but we're kind of under a time restraint to get this content recorded. So I'm not going to show that to you today. I'm more interested in the magnetizing of this. Just going to bring us in here real quick for a little magnet tutorial. So to get the hips and the torso magnetized, I recommend not gluing down uh, the little ball socket thing right here. Go ahead and before you attach that, drill it out with a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit here very carefully, holding it very firm because it will like to rotate and get that uh, rotational velocity on you, which is not good because we broke a couple things on accident, but that's okay. So now I'm going to build a superstructure in here with sprue so that we can come in with our magnets and lock this thing into place right here using 3 8 inch by uh, 1 16th inch magnets. And now before you prep your torso section, you're going to want to do the same thing right here and drill this out. Again, very slowly, very carefully, making sure to not plane anything. Just work it through a couple of times it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot of drill for a little bit of material but i think with the weight we're gonna need a magnet this big and after you test fit it to make sure it's all flush and your magnets are the right way put a couple of little wheelie bars across the magnet right there to give you a little bit of superstructure i'm going to fill this in with some glue and some vallejo plastic party so it holds strong but you can tell it is definitely very attracted right there. I'm loving it. So it gives us plenty of room to build up the superstructure up here and not have to worry about will it hold. Now, when it comes to magnetizing the weapon arms, it's actually pretty easy. If you've seen our armature tutorial, same principles here. We're going to use those 3 8 inch magnets that we used in the armature to magnetize the torso. Now, a little bit of a caveat here. You do have to be very careful drilling into here i had to actually dig it out with the exacto knife this is the top shoulder socket right here but other than that it worked out really well and in here it's going to be the same deal just like with the armors i got a little bit of blue tack there to keep the uh the armor plate on but there's a little bit of a, a recess in here like almost like a socket but not really a socket just like a a slit so to speak and you're gonna be able to fit your 3 8 inch magnet into here. However, you are gonna have to dig it out a little bit. I had to use a rotary tool to get in there. You can kind of see the after effects from the inside out kind of coming through. Not that I'm too worried about that. I can patch it with a little bit of plastic putty or perhaps just it won't even show up because it's gonna be on the inside and this covers up the other side. You actually glue the armor plate to the other side right here. But once you get this assembly together, it does hold. You don't have to worry about it coming off or anything like that. 3 8 inch magnet by 1 16th seems to work wonders for a lot of things. So now we're going to show you the finished product. And there she blows. <laughs> in one ways, in more ways then you know <laughs> old cabin ahab here is complete now this is a whale of a kit see what i did there uh to put together it took about six hours to properly deflash or you know de demold and magnetize this bad boy here now let me show you a couple of things that are very important if you want to paint it separately 
these armor plates are actually held together with blue tack right now and the top just kind of drops right in and they give you the extra turret i don't know where it is it's around here somewhere oh there it is so they give you all the extra pieces depending on what you want to do as far as your uh, equipment goes and if you want to paint it all separate well you can this top piece is going to come right off and you will be able to paint on that there you can see where i got it assembled together with blue tack the little r2d2 astro mechs that go at the top of here i had a little snafu with them so i'm gonna have to actually pin them but you kind of get the idea of where those are supposed to go overall i think it's a great kit uh probably one of i don't know mortarion i was really i was more impressed with how mortarion went together than this kit here uh but overall i think it's a great kit and when you magnetize everything and get it together you don't even have to glue in the spear right there this actually will shoot off well not shoot off but you can pull it off and shoot it at people like that it's a sound effect it's a technical term uh now how it compares up to other knights well it's going to be a little bit of a surprise believe it or not so here's one of our knights that was painted up by den of imagination and we're gonna oh, of course the top's gonna fall so it's it is taller, but not by much, not by much at all, but it is completely redesigned from the ground up. Very, very, uh, it's a great kit. It's very awe-inspiring. It's very cool to see it go together. And the fact that you can magnetize it so you can try to get some upgrade parts either on the secondary market or uh, perhaps from Shapeways uh, is a, a good boon and a good Kind of thing to, to actually go ahead and do these are blue tack down if you're wondering why don't those missiles fall off well they're the blue tack down so we're just gonna stop gluing those onto there so overall i think it's a great kit everything moves for the most part and it does a slug tizzle and like i said you could re reposition the legs if you're into that sort of thing it would have taken a lot longer to do that and all the armor plates you don't even have to glue on these are all blue tacked on because i'm gonna paint them separately to actually um you know get this one painted up for myself now i know remember when i said i would assemble the castellan 2 i lied that's my worst arnold schwarzenegger impression ever uh just not in the cards this took six hours <laughs> not doing another one for six hours i love you guys but six hours is ridiculous um i mean it's to be expected but it is a very long time uh to put 12 plus man hours plus editing this video into this thing it's just um uh, well, we can do it. <laughs> so you kind of get the idea from this. There might be some things that are different about the superstructure and everything like that. But other than that, it's, yeah, I've already looked at the parts. It's going to magnetize together just the same. So get your rotary tools out. Get your 3 8 inch by 1 16th inch magnets out. And uh, you should be good to go. And if you're wondering about does the torso, uh, does the torso hold? The torso definitely holds. There's a lot of uh, attraction right there. You don't have to worry about any of that. And the cool thing is you can be like, and like turn them around and be like shooting whales and stuff. So, uh, wow, just just a cool kit. I'm still, I still think Mortarion's their best kit so far, but this one is definitely up there as well. So that's it for this one. I am gonna go get a bite to eat because I'm worth it. <laughs> uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. So you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future night content here on the channel. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.